AP Calculus AB, Unit 9, Day 4, Office Hours, Worksheet. Uh, these are the answers that you should have checked already, but I will show them here very briefly. Pause the video if you need to. Check those. Here's the answers to 5, 6, and 7. And the answers to 8 and 9. And the answer to 10. Okay, let's try these out. This first problem say to use geometry. So we're going to go ahead and use geometry uh, to evaluate these absolute values. So the strategy is to draw the graph and to find simple geometric shapes and find their, their values. So this is a negative 1. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. Absolute value flips the negative parts up. <clears throat> so this is what the graph looks like. And we're going from zero to five. So we're drawing from that area and that area. So we got a little triangle and we got a big triangle. So we got one half base times height and one half big base times big height. And the base of the first one is one, the height is one, the base of the second one is four, and the height is four. So we're gonna get eight and a half or 17 halves. So that's how we do it. Geometry. Okay, next one. One, two, three. So start negative three, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. That's the graph. And we flip it. And so this is now the absolute value graph. And uh, zero to two is just this right here. So, I mean, I would do a trapezoid to do the average of the bases, three plus uh, one divided by two times the height, which is sideways, which is two is four. Alternatively, you could do a big triangle minus a little triangle, but same answer, more work. Okay, uh, these ones we're gonna do as a sum and difference of integrals not containing absolute value. So this is technique. We can't do geometry on this, right? So we need to find the zeros first. And then we do a line check. Test point. X equals three, positive, negative, positive. So this shows you where to break it up. And it also shows you what parts are negative that you're gonna need to fix. So uh, if we rewrite this, um, we're gonna do zero to two, drop the absolute values. This is the negative part. So we gotta put extra negative, fix it. Plus, the next part's positive, so it's plus two to six x squared minus 2x dx. And so antiderivative is x cubed over 3. That's 2x squared over 2. 0 to 2. Same antiderivative, x cubed over 3 minus x squared. Which is 6. Plug. Now be careful. Lots of subtraction going on here. If you plug 2 in, this is at 8 thirds minus 4 minus zero minus zero plus that's going to be 72 minus 36 minus eight thirds minus four okay so this is going to be negative 12 thirds negative four thirds positive four thirds 
for the first piece is going to be 36 minus 8 thirds plus 4. So um, that's going to be 40. 100, uh, 40 times 3 is 120. Minus 8 is 112. Thirds is 116. Thirds or uh, 3 gives us 30. 38 and two thirds. So, okay, next one is a sine curve. So, we're going to figure out what sine equals zero. So, it's going to be at zero plus pi k. We only care about zero to two pi. So, zero pi, test the value, can't test zero. Do like pi over two, which would be positive, negative. So um, we need to do zero to pi. Drop the absolute values. Don't even need parentheses here. Minus pi two pi. You got to you got to do pi two pi on its own, but it's also going to be negative. So we're going to fix it by adding an extra negative. So the antiderivative is giving me negative cosine. And the antiderivative here is going to be negative cosine. And so we get negative cosine pi minus negative cosine zero minus negative cosine two pi. And then this is going to end up being plus. I mean, you could wait to do this. Say this is going to be minus minus cosine of pi. And just make sure you distribute everything good. Cosine pi is negative one, so that's gonna be positive one. Cosine of zero is one, <clears throat> so that's gonna be plus one. And then minus, uh, this one's gonna be uh, negative one plus negative one, so that's gonna be two minus negative two is four. <clears throat> there you go. All right. Uh, number five, so we're going to do these now. I, I'm up for maybe using our new uh, technique, the little table technique that we're using for distance. So uh, if you guys are up for it, I mean, we could do it two different ways, but either way, you got to find, you got to find the zeros. All right. And then um, you don't have to do a line check for the table approach, but it could, it could be helpful. x equals 4, positive, negative, positive. So if you're doing table, we just jump right into the table, and we've got to plug these into the antiderivative. So we still got to integrate. We're doing the same exact work. So this is going to be x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2 plus 3x. Don't need to even bother with the C because we're going to plug all these in points in. 0, 1, and 3. If you plug 0 in here, we get zero if we plug one in, we get one third minus two plus three. So we get uh, one and one third or four thirds. <clears throat> and then we plug three in and we get nine minus 18 plus nine is zero. And then we say, well, let's find the distance between these. Well, that's four thirds. What's the distance between these four thirds? And then your final answer is eight thirds or two and two thirds. So that's a new kind of trick versus the other way you're gonna do it is you'd still do this and then, but you're gonna break it up. You're gonna say, okay, well, we gotta do zero to one X squared minus four X plus three. And uh, that's positive, so we leave it. And then we're gonna do one to three x squared minus 4x plus 3 drop the absolute values put parentheses but that one's got it that one's going to be negative so you got to add extra negative to fix it okay so now you got to do all this work now we're going to do the same kind of work we're doing here but we have to integrate it twice so it's going to be x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2 plus 3x and plug the limits in and it's going to be minus it's going to be the same thing x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared plus 3x and this one's going to be 1 to 3 um, so. 
So if we keep going with this. Um, let's see. We've got to plug limits in. So we have one third minus two plus three minus zero minus zero plus zero minus um, plug three in. We're going to get uh, nine minus 18 plus nine minus one third minus two plus three. I mean, it should look familiar. Like we're doing the same work, but we're doing it like twice. And, you know, we're doing a lot of the same work more than once. So that's going to be one and one third. And then this is going to be, that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. That's going to be one and one third. So that's going to be negative one and one third. So we're going to get two and two thirds or eight thirds. Same answer. But uh, I think I kind of like that table, right? I mean, do you like all that or do you like that? Same work, less of it. Take advantage of the redundant work. Okay, next one. Um, no matter what technique, you still got to find the zero. So make two minus four, x equals two, four. Um, and, you know, we could do a line check, two and four. Test uh, x equals five, positive, negative, positive. So if we're going to do the table, we still got to integrate. We drop the absolute values, find the antiderivative. So that's going to be x cubed over three minus six x squared over two plus eight x. Um, and uh, we're going to put 2, 4, and 6 in here. So if we put 2 in here, we're going to get 8 thirds minus 12 plus 16. So that's going to be 4, 6, and 2 thirds, or 8 to 20 thirds. And we plug 4 in, and we're going to get 64 thirds minus 16 times 48 plus 32, so that's going to be 20, 21 and one third minus uh, 16, so that's going to be 5 and one third or 16 thirds. Um, okay, in book 6 in, you're going to get 72 minus uh, 3 times 36 is 108 plus 48. So that's going to be, um, let me see, that's going to be 12 or 36 thirds. How are we going to do it? And then we're going to find the distance between these. So that's going to be 4 thirds, and that's going to be 20 thirds. So it's a total of 24 thirds which is eight. So that's the new kind of little streamline technique. Otherwise, you gotta break these up. You gotta do, okay, well, we're gonna do two to four, drop the absolute values. Um, and that's the negative part. So we've got to put an extra negative in front to fix it. And then we're gonna do four to six, drop the absolute values. That part's positive, so we just leave it. Okay, and we're going to be doing the same work we did over here, but just like extra times. x cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2 plus 8x. We need the extra negative in front to fix it, 2 to 4. And then it is the same antiderivative, so we could just say, oh, okay, it's going to be the same thing. x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared plus 8x, uh, 4 to 6. And is running ink, and unfortunately, it's my last blue one that I have with me right now, so I guess I'm switching to black. Okay, so uh, we have the negative in front, so we plug four in and get 64 thirds minus uh, 16 at 48 plus 32 minus you plug two in, you get eight thirds minus 12 plus 16. Plus, then you gotta do the next one. Uh, that one's gonna be 72 minus 108 
plus 48 minus, then you plug the fours in, you get 64 thirds minus 48 plus 32. I mean, these, these problems are a lot of work. But we're getting the same stuff we got here, just extra of it. Okay. So what was this? 21 and a third, and this is going to be minus 16. So that's going to be negative uh, 5 and 1 third. And then this was going to be 4. It's 12. Uh, so it's 12 thirds, 20 thirds, 6 and 2 thirds. Plus, uh, this is going to be um, 12 minus, and this was going to be, I think this is the same thing we got up here, right? So isn't this going to be 5 and 1 third? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is going to be, this is going to be negative 1 and 1 third, but this is actually negative, so we going to be positive 1 and 1 third. Check it out. Same thing we got there in our table. This is going to be 6 and 2 thirds. Same thing we've got on our table. Add them together, we get 7 and 3 thirds, which is better written as just 8. Oh my gosh, these are crazy. Okay, I don't know, I, I kind of like the table, but I guess it's up to you guys. So here um, we can figure out where the zeros are. A little trig this time alpha equals pi over six, quadrants one and two. Um, so we're looking at x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi k and x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And um, specifically, we are just interested in pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 this time because we're just looking at 0, 2 pi. So we're going to do a quick line check. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 0, 2 pi. Test the value, x equals zero, looks nice. Um, that would make the inside of the original absolute value uh, negative, then positive, then negative. So if we're gonna do the table approach, and this is where one where the, I think the line check could help you with the table approach, is you can integrate two sine x minus one which is going to be negative 2 cosine x minus x. We're going to plug 0 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 2 pi in. So we plug 0 in here. That's 1. That's going to be negative 2. That one's easy. And then we plug pi over 6 in, and that's going to be uh, cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So that's going to be negative root 3 minus pi over 6. And then we plug 5 pi over 6 in, and that's going to be uh, root 3 over 2. All right, 5 pi over 6, so that's going to be root 3 over 2, but it's going to be negative because it's quadrant 2, so that's going to be positive root 3 minus 5 pi over 6. And then 2 pi, cosine 2 pi is going to be 1, so that's going to be negative 2. So you plug 2 pi in, that's going to be 1, but there's a negative 2 in front, and then minus 2 pi. Now, here's the hard part. Like, what's the distance between these? Um, I would, that's where the line check's going to really help. I mean, you could try and estimate these and get decimals, which is one strategy. The hard part is knowing which one is smaller or bigger than the other. And that's where the line check's come in. Usually, you'd go, the later limit minus the earlier limit, right? If it's above the x-axis, that would give you the positive answer. But if it's below the x-axis, then we got to fix it. This is one of the ones we got to fix, so we got to do it backwards. We got to do the earlier one minus the later one to get the positive difference. The next one is positive ready, so we go this one minus this one. So root 3 minus negative root 3 is 2 root 3. Negative 5 pi over 6 minus negative pi over 6 is going to be positive, or no, that's going to be negative uh, 4 pi over 6. The next one's a negative one, so we've got to fix it, <clears throat> and we want to subtract this one 
this minus that go backwards. And we would get root 3 plus 2, root 3 plus 2, negative 5 pi over 6 minus negative 2 pi would leave you with a positive 7 pi over 6, I think. <clears throat> so now if we add all these up, that should give us the right answer. Um, it looks like the negatives cancel each other out, and then we get and we get 4 root 3. We have 8 pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 6 left, which is 2 pi over 3. So that's, that's the answer. That's the easier way. But at the same time, you got to know what you're doing. You got to, you know, use the line check to help you make sure you subtract things in the right order. Alternatively, we would have to rewrite this into three separate integrals. We'd have to do all that work right here. Anyways, zero to pi over six, drop the absolute values, <clears throat> and then pi over six to five pi over six, drop the absolute values, and then five pi over six to two pi, drop the absolute values. Now the negative ones we've got to fix by putting a negative in front. Okay. Now we get to find the antiderivatives would be a neg two cosine x minus x. Now they're all the same antiderivative, so it's neg two cosine x minus x. minus negative two cosine x minus x, five pi over six, two pi. And we're gonna plug all these in very carefully. I think the table thing also just helps me to not make as many mistakes with negatives and stuff. So uh, cosine pi over six root three over two is gonna be negative root three minus pi over six, <clears throat> minus got plug zero in, so it's gonna be negative two minus zero, plus, then we gotta do this one, so it's gonna be uh, positive root three minus five pi over six, minus, you gotta plug pi over six in, so it's gonna be negative root three minus pi over six, minus, we gotta do this guy, uh, cosine two pi, this is, so it's gonna be negative two minus two pi, Minus, then we plug 5 pi over 6 in, we get a positive root 3 minus 5 pi over 6. Now we just got to like get through the algebra and make sure we distribute negatives and everything correctly. So this is going to be positive root 3 plus pi over 6 minus 2. Okay. <clears throat> what you'll notice is the same thing as this guy right here. Okay, the next one is going to be 2 root 3, 2 root 3, um, minus 4 pi over 6. You'll notice that matches with that, okay? Minus, uh, or we could distribute it, I guess. Um, so that's going to be positive 2, right? Um, there's a minus root, it's gonna be plus root three, and then it's gonna be negative seven pi over six plus seven pi over six. And now we gotta combine all those together and we get four root three, the twos cancel, eight pi over six minus four pi over six is four pi over six is two pi over three. So I mean, I don't know. That's 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 a lot of a lot of work. I mean, those are your options. You know, do you want to do this nice little table or do you want to do all of this? You gotta do this for both of them no matter what. But if you're gonna use shortcuts, you better know how to use them correctly. Otherwise, it's gonna cost you more points when you make some crazy weird mistake because you just don't even know what you're doing. The other way is more straightforward, it's just a lot of work. Okay, distance and displacement. <clears throat>
So <clears throat> this is what we talked about in the lesson. Distance is the displacement is the uh, integral velocity. Displacement is the integral of the absolute value of velocity. In other words, speed. So um, we have, you know, I guess it, it depends on how you want to approach this. For displacement, it's not, you know, you you would you want to integrate the derivative of position, which is the integral of velocity t squared minus two t dt is t cubed over three minus two t squared over two plus c. Now we don't really need to worry about the plus c because we're going to plug two different values into it and subtract it. So the displacement is s four minus s zero. And four is going to be 64 thirds minus 16. And zero is going to be zero minus zero. They both have C, so we don't need to bother with that. Least common denominator, 348. So this is going to be 16 thirds or 5 and 1 third for the displacement. So displacement's not too crazy. Distance is a bit tougher. Um, if you wanted to, you know, for distance, you're going to have to, you know, integrate the absolute value of velocity, which is mean the absolute value of t squared minus 2t from 0 to 4. We're going to have to find the zeros either way. And then you could do a line check, but we could just jump in the table. I, I mean, if it was trig, like the last problem and had crazy, messy, irrational answers, then uh, I'm really going to depend on the line check to make it quicker and easier and correct. But it's just going to be a bunch of numbers. I probably could figure it out. So you got to integrate the velocity, drop the absolute values. And so that's going to be, we actually already did the work for that. That's uh, t cubed over 3 minus 2t squared over 2 plus c. Don't need to worry about it. You plug 0 in, you get 0. If you plug 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus 4, which is negative 4 thirds. Plug 4 in, you get 64 thirds minus 16, so it's going to be 16 thirds. And then you find the distance. Distance between 0 and negative 4 thirds is positive 4 thirds. The distance between negative 4 thirds and positive 16 thirds is 20 thirds. Think number line. So the answer is going to be 24 thirds, which is going to be 8 for your distance. Right? Now, alternatively, I mean, this is the way I would do it. Alternatively, you could take the approach that displacement is the integral of velocity. In fact, you know what we could do? We could use this one table to do both distance and displacement because displacement is just going to be this guy minus that guy. That's 16 thirds. That's the way to go. I'll try that on the next one. But, I mean, you could do this. You could do 0 to 4. Um, 0 to 4 of t squared minus 2t dt. I mean, this is essentially what we did. You don't have any absolute values here. t cubed over 3 <clears throat> minus 2t squared over 2. 0 to 4. You're going to plug 4 in, you get 64 thirds minus 16. And plug 0 in, you're going to get 0 minus 0. And so you're going to get uh, 16 thirds that way. With the displacement, same answer. Slightly different approach. For distance, it's, it's kind of a pain. So distance is the integral of the absolute value of velocity, which we already wrote this. Right, and we already found, I'm not going to redo that work. We already found the zeros. Um, you would want to do a line check.
And that's going to be positive, negative, positive. So we're going to need to split it up at 2. So we're going to do 0 to 2, parentheses, t squared minus 2t. And we're going to do 2 to 4, parentheses, t squared minus 2t, dt. Uh, the negative part has to be fixed. That's the first chunk. The other one's already paused, so we just leave plus. So now we have to integrate these t cubed over 3 minus 2t squared over 2. Seeing the same values as we've been getting all other ways we've been doing the work. <clears throat> t cubed over 3 minus t squared. We plug 2 in, we get 8 thirds minus 4 minus 0 minus 0. Here we get 64 thirds minus 16 minus 8 thirds minus 4. And we just got to be careful. Uh, this is me, this is 2 and 2 thirds, so this is going to be positive 1 and 1 third. And then this is going to be uh, uh, 64 minus 48, 16 thirds. And this is going to be a 2 and 2 and two thirds, negative 1 and 1 third plus 1 and 1 third. <clears throat> so that's 5 and 1 third. It's 7, 8, and th or 7 and three-thirds, which is eight. So, I mean, it's up to you. I'm trying to show you lots of different options, but hopefully you gravitate towards the table. So let me show you the table real quick on this one. So in this one, we got to find the zeros, right? So that's going to be at zero plus pi k. And for us, that's going to be zero pi, two pi, um, a line check could be helpful here, but I think these answers are going to actually come out nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump right in the table. We're going to do the table for both of these. So we got to integrate velocity. we got to integrate sine t, which is negative cosine t, plus c. Don't need the plus c's because they're all going to have it. 0, pi, 2 pi. Plug 0 in, you get negative 1. Plug pi in, you get positive 1. Plug 2 pi in, you get negative 1. So there's two things here. The displacement is just the final position minus the initial position, no matter what, is 0. And the distance is going to be all these guys' distances add up. That's 2, that's 2. The distance is 4. So do you like that? Limit amount of work for both parts right there? I mean, that's the way I would do it. Otherwise, you're going to say, okay, well, displacement is the integral of velocity, which is the integral of sine t, which is negative cosine t, plus c, right? And you can plug limits in 0 to 2 pi. 0, 2 pi, 0, 2 pi. So you get negative cosine of 2 pi minus negative cosine of 0. This is 1. This is 1. And we get 0. But we could have just got that from our nice little table that we built for distance. Distance without the table, you would do all this work. You would then definitely do a line check. Test the value, t equals pi over 2, positive, negative, negative, positive. Okay, so um, you would say, all right, well, 0 to pi is positive. Drop the absolute values. And then pi to 2 pi drop the absolute values, but that's going to come out negative, so we need an extra negative to fix it. So antiderivative is negative cosine. Antiderivative is negative cosine.
you got to plug plug these lens in very carefully we're doing all the same work that we did in this little table we're just doing a lot more of it uh so it's gonna be negative one plus one um uh, no no that's gonna be positive one plus one and that's gonna be negative one uh minus one so it's gonna be two minus negative two is gonna be four your distance better always turn out positive otherwise something really went wrong so what do you want you want this or do you want that we both got to use that essentially but this little table said all that work it seems kind of nice but you got to really understand it otherwise if you misuse it which is easy to do if you don't really get it all right um this one I'm giving acceleration, so we obviously maybe want to get to velocity. And I think we want to find the C value here, because that's going to, that's probably going to affect our work. So you plug zero in initial condition. Should equal to so your velocity is t squared minus three t plus two. All right. Now I'm just gonna be like, all right, let's find the zeros of that. Let's just make the table. So I guess that equals zero. Factor it. Make table. So we're going to integrate velocity without absolute values, which was we just found it t squared minus 3t plus 2 dt. It's going to be t cubed over 3 minus 3t three squared over 2 plus 2t two plus c, which we don't really need because we're going to plug all these. This is a definite integral. So we're going to do, um, we're doing 0 to 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3. Plug 0 in, you get 0. Plug 1 in, you get 1 third minus 3 halves plus 2, which is a mess. I'm going to make these all have at least common denominator of 6. So 6, 2, 3. So we have 2 minus 9 is negative 7 plus 12 is 5 sixths. Plug two in, you get eight thirds, uh, 12 halves, which is six plus four. So it's 10, 12 and two thirds, or uh, 36, 38 thirds, or 76 over six, which I'm anticipating, because I gotta find the distance between these. It's be easier if they have a common denominator. Um, Okay, let's see, did I, looking at my work from doing this problem before, and it looks like I'm getting different answers. I don't know why. Uh, let's make sure I did this last one correct. Eight thirds, 12 over two. Oh, this is supposed to be minus. <clears throat> That's supposed to be minus. It's supposed to be negative two. It's two and two thirds minus two should just be two thirds, just two thirds or um, four over six. Man, little tiny mistake, forgot that negative. Okay, three would be nine minus 27 halves plus six. So, um, that's 15 minus 13 and a half is one and a half, which is three halves, which is nine over six. 
So the distance between these is 5 6. The distance between these is 1 6. The distance between these is 3 6. The displacement is just the final spot, 1 and a half minus the initial spot. That's super easy from the table. Super easy from the table. Right? The distance is going to be all these added up. So that's going to be 9 over 6, which is 3 halves. Oh, wait. <clears throat> Did I make another mistake? Mm. Four over six, three halves, nine over six. Oh, this would be five over six. <clears throat> so that's going to be 11 over six or one in five sixths. So, I mean, that's the way I would go. Otherwise, you could do it the other way, but it's just a lot of extra work. Um, you have to do a line check, test the value, t equals 3, positive, negative, positive. Part A, are you going to do, you're going to do displacement maybe equals the integral of velocity, which is the integral of, we still have to do this work. This work is for both approaches. T squared minus 3T plus 2, and we're going 0 to 3. So then you're going to get t cubed over 3 minus 3t three squared over 2 plus 2t, two 0 to 3. Um, so you're going to get um, 27 3 is 9 minus, put 3 in here, 27 over 2 plus 6. You can put 0 in, and that's luckily nice. So this is going to be 15 minus 13 half is 1 and a half or three halves. So you could do the displacement that way. It was kind of cool just using the table though that we were making for distance and use this one table or both of them. And then here we could we could do it the, the good old original way. Like okay well it's the absolute it's the integral of the absolute value of velocity. So it's the uh, integral of the absolute value of t squared minus 3t plus 2 and um, I'm going to assume, you know, I'm going to use this work and then you do the table. And so we got to break it up. We're doing 0 to 3. So we got to do 0 to 1 of t squared minus 3t plus 2. And that part is positive. The next part is negative. So we need an extra negative 1 to 2. And then the next part is positive, 2 to 3. And this is just a lot to write up just to set it up before we can get going. Instead of the table, um, t cubed over 3, but I'm committed. I'm going to do each of these problems two ways. Come this far. I should finish it off. It's a good test, you know, makes me sharp. Definitely make you sharp if you can get through all this correctly without making mistakes. So plug in one and get one third minus three halves plus two. Plug zero and you get zero minus zero plus zero. And then minus Plug 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus 12 halves, which is 6 plus 4 minus, and you plug 1 in, 1 third minus 3 halves plus 2. Plus, then you got to plug 3 in here, and it's going to be 9 minus 27 halves plus 6 minus, and you plug 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus uh, 12 over 2 is 6 plus four, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. All right, and you just gotta keep going and hope you don't make any mistakes. Uh, least common denominator would probably be six. So we're doing the same kind of work we did over here. We just have to do it way more often. So um, two, 14 minus nine is five over six. Okay, so eventually we get that five over six. Oh man, that's gonna be eight thirds minus one third. Eight thirds minus one third is seven thirds. And then we have negative six plus four is negative two. Negative two minus two is negative four. And then we have a plus three halves. So I guess a little common denominator action might help here too. Make them all six. <clears throat> so that's gonna be 14 minus 24 is negative 10, plus nine is negative one, and there's another negative, so it's gonna be one sixth, which by the way is the same thing we got up here, right? And we still have one more. Plus, man, what's this going to be? Uh, 15 plus 6 is 21 minus 4 is 17. And then you have minus 27 halves minus 8 thirds, least common denominator. These are going to be much bigger values. So 60, that's 102 minus 81, so it's 21, minus 16 is five over six. I mean, how do you not make a mistake in all of that? How, how, I don't, oh my gosh and it just took forever and i'm sure if i would you know it'd be so easy to make mistakes anyways that's it you got options now choose the best one and get good at it